Authorities said at a news conference this morning that they want to give these three young women time to recover from this 10-year kidnapping ordeal before they start asking them the gritty questions about what happened here. A family member of Amanda Berry's says that Amanda's mother used to buy Christmas presents for her even during those years she was gone. Sadly, Amanda's mother died in 2006, a friend says from a broken heart. But other family members say they will be hugging Amanda all day today, and the whole city of Cleveland is just thankful that they are alive and safe today. Reporting live in Cleveland, Andy Rosgen for ABC News. And Melissa, right now, a number of those people who were inside the Sikh temple when the shooting happened are gathered inside a bowling alley right behind me, talking to police, trying to learn more about what the suspect might have said as he carried out the shooting spree earlier today. Dave, the line starts back there and it runs all the way over here. Of the 2,600 flights out of O'Hare today, 450 were canceled. And take a look at what all of Chicagoans are dealing with today. It is just a mess. Here in Lamont, a suburb of Chicago, about 20 minutes to the southwest, the entire town and all of its 116 miles of streets got shut down for an hour today, just so authorities could deal with the effects of this ice storm. Good morning, Anna. Today is a deadline for cards and letters to be in the post office to get it there by December. 25th, and this one is so packed with letters, we can't even open it right now. Now, of course, you might imagine that the postal workers are bracing for a very busy day here. Although we've talked to a number of people who had relatives inside the temple at the time, and they tell us just amazing stories, including one, the nephew of the president of the temple was locked inside a bathroom, calling out on his cell phone, either texting or calling when the shooting happened. NBC's Andy Rosegin live in Chicago with the latest. Ann and Adam, the stuff that we're getting now is lake effect snow. This is the excess stuff, but you're right. The storm itself dumped 20 inches of snow on Chicago, so forecasters did get it right. But nobody could have predicted what happened on Chicago's busiest street. The storm showed no mercy in Chicago. Getting around was a diagonal challenge. Even the heaviest equipment could not withstand the wind. But even the newspaper boxes seem to move farther than some drivers. Yes. Are you supposed to be home by now? Pass home. We can't get on Lakeshore Drive. Traffic on Lakeshore Drive, the city's major thoroughfare along Lake Michigan, was frozen. Okay, once I get this cleared out, we'll push you off. We're going to get you going westbound. At least 100 cars and the people inside them were stuck for upwards of 12 hours. So what have you done in that time? Or Worried a little bit. <laughs> Prayed a little bit until the fire department managed to get to them by snowmobile. I'm 31 years with the city. Um, I, I haven't experienced anything like we did last night with Lakeshore Drive. Eventually, rescue crews got to all the people before their cars were swallowed up by the snow and got them out safely. Their cars had to be towed. Elsewhere in Chicago, the wind tossed chunks of the Wrigley Field roof onto the street below. At O'Hare and Midway airports, a combined 2,000 flights are canceled. And right now, Detroit's airport is getting its wave of cancellations. In Dallas today, more icy conditions come at an especially bad time with all the Super Bowl preparations. And now, the Midwest says good riddance and good luck to places like the Northeast, where the ice and the snow and the wind are blowing in. The streets are being plowed right now. Many businesses are closed. A lot of schools are closed as well. There was at least one death directly connected to this storm. That was a man last night who either fell or was swept off the shoreline in Chicago and drowned in Lake Michigan because authorities said it was just too dangerous to try to rescue him. Reporting in Chicago, Andy Rosen, Ann and Adam, back to you. He is in Cleveland this afternoon with the very latest. Andy. Liz, Michelle Knight spent the longest time in captivity, the longest time in the hospital, but now she is also finally enjoying some of the same freedom as Gina DeJesus and Amanda Berry. A DNA test conducted by the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation proves what we all suspected. Amanda Berry gave birth to her alleged captor's daughter. While the three women were locked up inside the house, Ariel Castro would reportedly take little Jocelyn to the park or to church. Castro's friend, Ricky Sanchez, says the 52-year-old would often introduce the little girl as his granddaughter. She looked kind of like a shy, like, a, like she don't want to talk to me. Castro has been charged with kidnapping and rape, and prosecutors say hundreds more charges could be added, including murder for the forced miscarriages. I would absolutely expect the death penalty uh, to be sought in this case. In Ohio, the law is very clear on aggravated murder, 
And we hear for the first time from the oldest of the three women, Michelle Knight, who was released from the hospital today. She was the first one to be abducted, spending over 10 years in Castro's captivity. She's thanking the community for the outpouring of support and says she is in good spirits. The two other alleged victims are also adjusting to a new reality. Gina De Jesus and her family are now all sleeping in the family living room, together keeping her company. Amanda Berry had to learn of her mother's passing. Luana Miller made this emotional plea for her daughter's return in 2003. It's just getting too hard. If anybody knows anything about my daughter, I wish somebody would come forward because somebody out there knows something. Well, Cleveland police confirmed that the FBI took Michelle Knight's name off an FBI missing persons database list about a year after she disappeared because they couldn't find her mom. But police say that they did always keep the case open. Andy Rosen reporting for Channel 7 Eyewitness News in Cleveland. Liz, back to you. Nancy, the organizer insists this march was never meant to be. He says it was supposed to be just the downtown rally. But once the demonstrators decided to walk, nothing could stop them. Equal rights! Angry but energized, defeated in California but determined in Chicago. At least 2,000 demonstrators choke the magnificent mile. I think it's a national awareness. I think we need to get this kind of thing on the news so that people know that, this is, that these rights are not negotiable. It started as a rally in Federal Plaza, part of a national campaign to protest last week's passage of a gay marriage ban in California. Let those people across the street hear you just as louder. Those people across the street support the gay marriage ban. More and more they tend to say, if you disagree with them on, on gay marriage, then you're some kind of a hater or a bigot. We believe that's wrong. But the band's supporters were left behind when the demonstrators took to the streets. What do we want? Equal rights! Their organizer says it was spontaneous. They had no permit to march, no planned route. Is there a permit for people flooding the streets? I don't think so. I mean, people feel passionate about something. Police watched, drivers stopped, shoppers gawked, tourists cheered. One man said he didn't necessarily agree with the demonstrators, but respected them. To be a Chicagoan, I, I remember seeing the, uh, the riots when I was back in law school. Look at the way our Chicago police are handling it. I think this is one city that knows how to handle demonstrations. Police eventually threatened the marchers to wrap it up or risk arrest. They did wrap it up with no arrests. But the protest continues next week. The rally organizers will demonstrate outside a movie theater in Evanston. The theater's owner, they say, has donated $10,000 to the passage of that California gay marriage ban. In the newsroom, Andy Rosen, Fox Chicago News.